Welcome back to Beyond the Wrench. My name is Jay Ganinen, and I am your host. I'm honored to be joined by none other than Tracy Hicks, who is the auto instructor at Frederick County Public Schools. Today, Tracy and I are going to talk about what good industry support looks like, how students today want to learn, and ways to introduce the industry to younger generations. Tracy, how in the heck are you? Hey, Jay. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Uh, just uh, looking forward to uh, wrapping up another week in the shop here at school and uh, seeing if we can get some help out there for anybody listening that might need to uh, need some help or looking to, to lend some help. All right. Well, how uh, as we record this, school's just getting kicked off. Uh, how's, how's the school year been so far? Uh, our school year's been great. We had uh, a lot of equipment get replaced over the summer, so it's always really nice to come back and, and be able to unpackage uh, some new equipment. We got a new uh, off-car brake lathe. Um, my, my class coming in this year, I think, is probably going to be my best class I've had yet. I just feel like there's a lot of raw talent and a lot of drive there, um, which, you know, some people say the this generation doesn't doesn't really possess that, but I I really don't believe that. I think there's I spots that don't maybe don't have you know the right direction or guidance or whatever. But I, this generation definitely wants to work and needs to work uh, the way the you know the the economy and the and the industry is going. Like I feel I feel like I got a really hungry group, so I'm looking to keep them keep them motivated and get as many of them into the industry as I can. So. Uh, they're already, you know, they're already out in the shop working, you know, it's, it's the hot, it's still hot season here in Maryland in, uh, in September. We're starting to get some cooler mornings, but towards the end of the day, it's still getting up mid to high eighties, which, you know, for the rest of the country this summer is nothing, but here that's, uh, that's hot in our, in our, uh, you know, old shop that's not air conditioned. Uh, so it's going good. We're, we're, we're yeah. really excited. Be nice to get in into the true fall. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're a teacher now. Uh, how, how did you get into becoming a teacher in the first place? Uh, great question. Uh, because if you asked me at any point in my career, um, there was probably only one time where I'd even kind of pondered it. Um, but I actually took the automotive program here in Frederick County back in 2000, 2001, 2002 as a, as a junior and senior in high school just kind of trying to find my place and my direction. Um, and I really, really enjoyed the program. I got uh, enough of an interest developed that I went to a tech school in Chicago, UTI. Um, and then from there, I really started to click and I got in the industry, worked for BMW, um, went to BMW step program in Florida and then worked in the industry and, you know, was always community, communicating with my my instructor that kind of got me on that path Gary Wolfong was really instrumental in getting me on that path and letting me you know actually start to take you know take the steps and get where I needed to be uh, so we went to you know I wanted to return you know that support to the next generation so as early as I can remember like 2007 I did a skills contest for for Gary here at Frederick um, you know, kind of just chairing the program, designing stations, judging stations, organizing, and, and did that on, you know, we do like a three-year rotation here with our regional contest between the counties that are around us. Uh, so I was supporting, you know, every three years and in between there with the PAC, the Professional Advisory Council, uh, which looking back, I really probably wasn't a great supporter because I didn't quite understand what it was at that age. I was still, you know, in my 20s then, but just trying to to help and volunteer and do what, what I thought I could do to help, you know, give them the, the, the industry support they needed. Um, and that's what all ultimately led to me getting kind of recruited for the position here is I was at a PAC meeting, uh, and, and the CTE coordinator, you know, let me know that the one and the other instructor was retiring and that there, there would be taking applications. So, I, uh, I filled out my application and uh, interviewed and got the job. So I was delighted to, to take the position. It was really probably earlier than I wanted to start teaching, but there's, there's so little turnover in our area with these type of positions. You know, the next opportunity 
you never know when the next opportunity for something like that is. It might at that point it might be too late. So I think it was really the perfect time. I thought it was a little early, but it really ended up being the perfect time for me to make that move um, and come here and really start to take the program to the next level. I think it's interesting because uh, George Aaron at ASC had told me uh, a few weeks ago, he said that he's been talking with people and surveying. And uh, one of the common concerns that we've got about the industry is that there's a, a large shortage of teachers right now. And he said uh, they, they did some surveying and asked how, tech school instructors got their start and a lot of it was because their own tech ed teacher or automotive teacher had kind of coined them when they were growing up and thought that they would be a good teacher at some point and so kind of always had some type of contact and ultimately ended up referring that person to come work in the program and so I think it's interesting and I think it's probably you know it's when we look at that concern there is a, a, a big challenge in in taking that step for a lot of technicians. Uh, and as they look at maybe stepping into the education side, um, they're worried about salary. They're worried about, you know, different things being off the, uh, off the shop floor and maybe not learning what they, you know, are continuing to do. What was it that drove you ultimately to like kind of take that next step and actually do it? Uh, I just feel like I had, so much to offer the students here um, with my experience um, in the different brands, uh, the diagnostic work that I was doing, um, just, you know, the, the, the information that I could provide, the, the things that I saw that I, you know, from attending the PAC meetings where I could make some improvements to the program. Uh, the main thing was just the, the energy. I think the program needed a boost of energy um, a new instructor, some new blood in, um, to try to, you know, take, take, like I said, take it to the next level. I, and I just, I wasn't, I didn't think that anybody else was right for the job. I didn't know if I was right for the job, but I didn't think anybody else was right for the job. Um, because it is, like you said, it's difficult to, to take that step out of the industry. If you're, you're a super successful technician, it's a pay cut. Um, you know, you, you have to take classes related to education, uh, whether it be special education or planning management, stuff like that. Um, and it's so different depending on what district you're in or what area you're in. Um, it, the, what, from what I've heard, the attrition rate can be, or the turnover can be pretty, pretty tough in some of the industries or just, you know, finding, finding applicants, you know, we, the set, the, the teacher I spoke about earlier retired, you know, two years ago, and we were lucky to get an application from a, a count, a teacher moving from another County that actually lives in our County. Uh, but there, other than that, there weren't a whole lot of ap qualified applicants, um, you know, and it, it can have the reputation of a, you know, the worst thing ever is to get somebody in that's looking to just kind of slow down. And, you know, maybe doesn't want, maybe they're tired of turning wrenches. That's about the worst person you want to, to take a position teaching the next generation. And so, like I said, me coming in at, uh, I think I was 30 or 31 when I started, you know, I was still a spring chicken by industry standards and, and ready to, you know, come in here and light some fires and, and, and teach kids, you know, not only the content, but the flat rate mentality, the hustle mentality, the fix it right the first time mentality that that doesn't always translate out of a textbook or, or content um, and kind of develop this total package student and deliver it to the industry when, you know, when they, when, if that's what the student wants to do or wanted to do. Well, and I think that young enthusiasm goes so far uh, for that student and how they perceive our industry, right? And the changes that we've made in our industry and how advanced it's gotten you kind of need that enthusiasm at the head of a program to, to really share with them what's changed, what's changing, how difficult the position is. It's not an easy position to, to do. Like a, a technician is not an easy job. But like being able to bring that enthusiasm and kind of teach them that pride of being able to fix something and, and doing it the right way, uh, you can have a huge influence on a lot of people. So I can see the attractiveness of why you'd want to kind of jump the fence, so to speak, to, to go to the education side and 
uh, I'm sure there's, I, I, out of curiosity, just like, how do you like the job? Like, how uh, do you like being a teacher? Was it a good transition for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably an undiagnosed workaholic. So, you know, it's my new, you know, it's my new stay late and, you know, and crank out these hours. My new thing is, is doing that as a teacher. Um, but it's just, it, it, it comes with its challenges, but I like just, you know, just 20 minutes ago, I have a student that graduated during COVID and he's working for uh, a BMW dealership down the road. And he just sent me pictures of his first clutch job. You know, That's it's awesome. just, I get those messages and those phone calls all the time. You know, it's, it's just, it's really cool to see the students come back and, and, and say, man, you were right. You know, this is awesome. This is, I'm doing this. Uh, you know, I, you know, I just moved here, just bought, just bought my house. You know, I'm thinking about starting my own, my own shop or, or whatever. Uh, you know, the summer, the summer visits are cool, but just keeping in touch with the students after graduation, you know, some, some te teachers are a little hesitant to do that, but you know, I, like I said, I take a, there's like a piece of each one of me and each one of them. And so I, you know, I tell them all the time, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm your automotive teacher, but I'm like your, your success coach. Like I want you to go be successful, whether you're in a truck shop or, or in an elevator union or working on marine equipment or dirt bikes or whatever. I, I don't, I really don't care where you end up, you know, it, you know, I want you to be successful and enjoy what you're doing and, and live a good life. So when I hear and I see them reach back out to me or I run into them in public, you know, and they tell me something new that they're doing or where they're working or, or stuff that they're building. It's just, you know, it's like job well done. It's like mission accomplished. And so that's got to be what keeps you going. Like, you know, because the results aren't immediate. They're not, you know, you're not going to come in and, and everything, you know, when I first started, I'm like, I'm going to get every one of these kids in the industry and they're all going to be working. And then after my first year, I'm like, man, 50% would be a huge win, you know, because some of them, some of them figure out when they take a class like mine, that that's not what they want to do. And, and I, in the beginning, I didn't think about that, but now I know that that's a good thing because it didn't cost them any money. It just cost them a yes. little bit of time where they would have been maybe in a class where they didn't, you know, didn't really take anything out of it anyway. So it, it, it took a little bit of time. They learned some skills, you know, that they can keep, but they learn the biggest lesson they learned is that they, you know, that they maybe don't want to do this and they want to look at something else. Um, but the, I'm telling you, the numbers in the last couple of years are of the ones that decide not to do it are getting smaller and smaller. Like, you know, it, it, it definitely goes up and down. But, you know, last year at the end of the school year, I had a really nice uh, opportunity from one of the from a state, the state highway department here. And, you know, there was a partnership we made late in the spring and I, I had zero students to send them. Like everyone was in the industry or moving or going to college. So I, you know, terrible problem for him to have, but great problem, problem for, for me you. and my students to have, you know? <laughs> um, and so hopefully, like I said, we're going to work with him this year and, and try to get him in early and get, you know, kind of nurture a kid along and kind of understand the value of walking into a job like that at such a young age and being super set up with, you know, benefits and a pension and stuff, you know, 35 years down the road is just going to be a huge opportunity for somebody that would like to do that kind of, that kind of work. I think the best teachers I've seen are really engaged with their alumni network like you are. And I think that is a really big, excuse me, key to continually building the program, right? Because a lot of those students are going to start off as techs, but then they're going to move up the ladder and they're going to be managers or some other capacity at a dealership or, at, you know, so maybe an owner of a shop. And then you keep them in the fold and that ends up being your advisory committee. And that ends up being really who supports your program. And uh, it, we've seen it over and over again, but I think the most successful programs have a really engaged alumni network and then are able to just use that to kind of help support their program and build it to be even bigger than what it already is. Yeah, we have a, one of our biggest supporters in the PAC um, dynamic. They, they have six locations, and I, I know for a fact that more than 50% of their entire staff is 
former CTC, you know, graduates or students at various levels throughout their career, whether it's, you know, a first year student, you know, a few first year students just starting the automotive program, the or or students that graduated 15, 20 years ago that didn't or that are, you know, running their own location now that have been kind of groomed to 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 take on a new location as the as the company expands. So it's pretty it's pretty cool to see that because that's like that's what some of the other shops that don't participate as much could pick up from that, you know, from attending a pack meeting or, or reaching out and figuring out how to support is like, this is like a, a, a blueprint for how this pays off long term, you know, so don't focus so much on the short term benefit that you're going to get out of the program, focus more on how you can support the program and just know in the, in the long run, you know, that relationship's going to benefit you somehow, some way. Did you know Wrenchway provides a number of free solutions for high schools and post-secondary schools with automotive or diesel programs? Wrenchway's website makes it easy for instructors to work with shops and dealerships in their area. Instructors can request resources from local industry like tool and equipment donations, shop tours, advisory committee members, and more. Instructors can also use Wrenchway's website to help educate students and parents about what it's like to work in the industry. Wrenchway's Top Shops pages are a great way to show students and parents what it's actually like to work at different shops in the area. Shops are required to disclose important information like compensation ranges for all levels, detailed benefits information, and more. Learn more about Wrenchway and sign up for a free account at wrenchway.com slash solutions slash schools. Link is in the show notes. How do you look at the growth of the program and is there potential? And I kind of ask this almost vaguely because I'd love to hear a high school perspective on can you grow the program? Uh, would that require another teacher, more space? Uh, you know, what, what is there potential, like student potential that goes beyond what you currently have? Walk me through kind of the, the growth of a, of a program and if there is potential or if there truly is a cap of like, hey, this is, this is about all we can do here. Uh, I mean, it, it's so – one of the things I think is so hard to understand is the difference between every program, every location, every area. You know, even in our state, from one automotive program to the next – if you lined them up and looked at the, the demographics, the, the equipment, the size, the space, the schedule, the, the requirements, there's so many differences. It's really hard to say, but like in our area, our county is growing. Our student growth is 9.5% wow. in a year, which is the next highest county in our state is 1.4, I think. So like our county is growing so fast that – there's definitely room for growth in our CTC or our career education, but we're just right now we're limited by budget and size and, and space land space because we're growing so fast. Property values are, you know, astronomical. Um, but you know, our shop is, is, is large, but it's old. So, you know, having, you know, I talked to student, I talked to a lot of teachers online and their student numbers are way higher than mine. And, you know, I know how hard it is to manage my student numbers in a shop this size. So I can't imagine, you know, being in a spot where there's more students coming in because I, I personally feel like, you know, you're, you have less ability to do as much with with the students you have. So it almost, your numbers are higher, but the, the quality of the number is, is lower just because of how, spread thin you are as an instructor to create relationships or, or your equipment is 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 not adequate or whatever so we're we're definitely undersized we could we could take more in with more space more students in with more space which our pack is going you know to the board of ed and they're and they're at the meetings and they're presenting and they're trying their best to get uh, some money injected into our career career center here. Um, but like, you know, a diesel program, our county could support a diesel program. We don't have a dedicated diesel program. 
Um, there's there's ways to do it. There's opportunities. There's needs. Um, but it, are the are the right people you know in charge of those decisions? And is the money there? Is the you know are they thinking it through and doing it correctly? Or are they rushing it? You know or or doing it the wrong way? Um, there's there's got to be a need. I I really think that if your program isn't growing in interest that is probably shrinking in interest or dying a little bit. And so if you're, you know, you always have to be working on making your, your program exciting to the next, this generation and the next generation and, and working to make it better. Cause if not, it's, it's, it's falling behind. I also think there's a lot of value in engaging that pack or your advisory committee of, you know, the more presence they can have in your program, it feels like the stronger your program is. And maybe when you have to go to that school board meeting and ask for additional budget, or you have to do, you know, go to your boss and ask for additional budget, what, uh, however that process works, if you have that industry backing and that support, it feels like it gives you maybe more of a backbone when you go into that stuff, right? Because you, you have the support of the, the automotive and diesel community when you're walking into those rooms. Yeah, I mean, I it, it's hard for me to speak to it because, you know, it's definitely not going to be me that the automotive teacher saying, hey, we need a bigger classroom or we need this, you know, updated stuff. But I feel like if you have a really strong, you know, support for the industry from the industry, you know, that that employs the you know, employs a certain amount of the community, maintains their vehicles, you know, makes up a certain amount of the, you know, the business of in this area and they're and they're they're saying that they they can't there aren't enough students to hire or there there aren't enough you know products being created by your school you know there's there's got to be you know there's got to be some some change there i think what well, so um it's 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 a very touchy subject it's very tricky to navigate um and and the pack, I think, is is the point. It's just difficult to ask them to, you know, they're busy, they're running businesses, they're they're trying to grow their businesses, and you kind of, you know, you're trying to sell them on the advantage of, you know, helping grow your your area or your your school or your program to benefit them and to benefit everyone. So um, our our county's been growing for a long time, and this and our our building is has grown a little bit, but we're really busting at the seams now. So, you know, when the problem with an area like ours, when everything's growing, the support needs to be everywhere. They, they need new elementary schools, they need new middle schools, they need new roads, they need new fire departments. So the, all while all, cutting all, the budget, <laughs> out. Yeah, like, everybody's asking for something. So, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're probably pretty far down on the list, but we do a really great job of what we have. So it, it you know you know we'd love to have some more some more space or a newer space and and be able to 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 get some more students into the building and and create take this product that we already do super super well and and expand upon it um, but that's you know that's out of our control so we can't let it you know we can't let it change or change what we're doing or or deviate us from our plan or our mission in your school, I'm curious, and this seems like a probably a stupid question, but how does the chain of command work at the school internally? So say you need additional budget or you're forecasting that you need additional budget for uh, some project or tool or whatever it might be. How does that work in terms of like, who do you go talk to, to, to kind of voice that you need additional budget? So for, for equipment related stuff, typically we can, we can request that federally through the uh, Carl Perkins Act or grant, um, which is done at a county level for the CTE office. And luckily we have a, a fantastic CTE coordinator that has been injecting equipment money into our program since I started and, and, and before then. You know, she definitely she definitely hears from me when budget season rolls around. Um, you know, we've got we've got new tools, we've got new equipment. Um, we've you know, if, if anything breaks, it's pretty pretty easy to get it fixed in a timely manner. Um, 
And then outside of that, you know, smaller things, we have a, we have a local budget that we can address, you know, we can, we can use, um, we get some fun, we get some funds, we raise some funds because we do some live work. So, um, if we work on some cars, we can, we can take a little bit of the part, we can take a little markup on the parts and, and turn that into some, some funds for like student activities, field trips or whatever. Um, that takes pretty long time to grow. Um, but if somebody, uh, we also have a found, we also have our foundation, which can support us in if they need to. So we have lots of different opportunities. We don't really ever have anything that, you know, we can't get short of like the space or the, or the size, you know, the, the footprint of, of what we have. That's where we're kind of, that's kind of out of our hands. Everything else so far though, knock on wood, we've been pretty good about, um, the big, you know, one of the big buzz, buzz things for me right now is keeping the, the program, you know, at the, at the forefront of technology and keeping it interesting. You know, we want to bring in, you know, the newer refrigerant co equipment and the ADOS equipment, but the stuff it's is expensive. so expensive and the, you know, and the subscriptions for those kind of tools and the, <laughs> and the constantly revolving, you know, equipment and updating stuff is way beyond a high school auto budget. Um, and there's really no industry support for that. You know, that's, it's, it's really kind of a weak point for the industry outside of school, you know, community, I'm sure there's community colleges out there and, and, and tech schools, you know, colleges that are doing a, a good job with it because they get a much friendlier budget to be able to handle that. But, you know, the number of students going through those type of programs is much lower than what's going through just the high school program. So um, the kids need the, the stuff is there. The kids need to be aware of it and getting the equipment and even a vehicle with that kind of equipment into the shop to to let the kids, you know, understand what what we're talking about, what we're doing is is so difficult. You know, we we updated our textbook two years ago now and the the. The systems are mentioned in there, but there's no, you know, there's no literature on it. Um, we get online training from OEMs, um, but it seldom is ADOS related. It's just very generic fundamental system stuff. So we do, we were fortunate to get a, uh, a Subaru Ascent from Subaru. We have a fantastic partnership with Subaru. They're, they're the, they're my top manufacturer when it comes to support. So we have a 2020 Ascent with an eyesight camera and and safety equipment, but we don't have you know we don't have ADOS equipment to go with it. So we we can get we can borrow it from the local Subaru training center. Um, like I said, they're super super great to work with, and we just are lucky their their training center on the east coast here is in our town. Wow. Um, so I go knock on their door and, and say it's me again, you know. Um, and that's probably why that partnership is so good, but not every school has that that ability. And and like I said, our budget is our budget on stuff like that is tight. ASC doesn't require any any stuff any equipment like that yet to be accredited, so it's difficult to obtain. And and you know, at, at the high school level, I should say. So and there's you know there's a case to be made that that's a little bit early to be involving you know, to be worrying about ADOS systems and calibrations and stuff like that in, in the, uh, at the high school level, but it's such a safety issue and such a safety, you know, conversation that, you know, the kids should be aware of it when they leave a program, you know, that has, you know, five, five, six, seven hundred 700 hours of, of time, you know, being able to see those systems is definitely going to be important to those students so they know what's going on when they get out in the industry. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think the programs across the U.S. vary so much, like the automotive programs based on size of the program, budgetary restrictions based on, you know, the the tax level in, in the town. Uh, there, there are a lot of variables that apply to that. That's something I've learned as, as we've really grown the school side of Wrenchway. But, you know, when it, when it does come to, like, say budget, for example, that's where – you know, industry, I feel like could step up a, a lot, right? Like if it is getting free subscriptions to the stuff that you need or 
um, you know, potentially coming together to donate that ADAS system or, you know, there, I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity. Now, one of the things I really, really like about you and what you've done with your program, I've had the opportunity to sit in on some of those PAC meetings. You guys do a phenomenal job in the meetings uh, and, and really, I feel like talking about some real issues rather than kind of just checking the box. And I, you know, I, I've sat through a lot of advisory committee meetings where it feels like we check the box, move on. I think your, your stuff is very tangible. And I do think that's what's helped you grow your industry support and your pack in general uh, so much is because of that. But uh, talk to me about that. I mean, you've done one heck of a job building support out there. Was that something that came handed to you as you, you got into the school or is that something you had to build? I mean, the, 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 the bones were definitely there when I started in 2016, we had a, we had good, we had a good solid core group of members. Um, but on, when it came down to the list of names, there was a lot of names that were on there that didn't participate. Um, and mainly just wanting, you know, what I wanted to do was get in there and and when you're when you first start out as a teacher, one of the hardest things is is knowing what you need or knowing what to ask for. You know, people will say, well, what what can I do for you? You know, what do you need help with? But you don't know what you don't know. So you're just kind of like, well, you know, the, the the lights are on and the walls are up, and you know, I think we're good. Well, one you know, once I was in for several years, I started to kind of learn how to ask for what I wanted. Hey, I, you know, we need this car. We need this tool. We need this, we need a scan tool. We need to get this. How are we, how can we get this? Like who can get me this? And the, the nice thing about working with automotive uh, shops is they're typically one upper. So if, <laughs> if Toyota gives me this, the next thing you know, you know, Subaru is like, well, we're going to give you this. So I just kind of, I just kind of, you know, lay the plant, you know, plant the seed and kind of let them go to go at it. You know, this, 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 you know, this company's going to, this, this shop's going to buy this group of kids, some uniform shirts. Well, this, oh, we can get them shirts and pants, you know, it's kind of like, okay. Like, well, they also need, you know, a flashlight and stuff, you know, just kind of like, you know, kind of leading it a little bit, like hoping that they'll take the, take the reins on it. The, a great example of that is we have in-house scholarships that we give out in uh, April and May at the end of the year at our award ceremony for our school. And, and we, our PAC committee alone, you know, we had, we have some, some scholarships for, you know, a thousand dollar scholarships for tech schools. If the students are going to a tech school or a college, but the PAC stepped up with some assistance and, and, and they, they decided to make some additional scholarships instead of just one and they and they earmarked them for students that maybe were going straight to the industry and they could use them for tool purchases also because you know i don't you know if i have a student that wants to go to college great but that's not the direction that i that i point them you know if that's what they want to do i'm all for it let me get you the information and and give you my opinion on which where you should end up or what for for what you're trying to accomplish but you know, nothing makes me more happy than, than getting them enough information where they can go straight into the industry and be successful. And one of the hardest first steps is tool tool purchasing. So, you know, three, we did seven scholarships just among the pack last year, $7,000 scholarships, and four of them had a tool, a tool option. And all of those, all of those scholarships got claimed for tool purchases. And the other three went for, for post-secondary scholarship books books or tuition or or stuff like that so that was one of the things where you know we're in the meetings and the packs like well you know we can do one or or you know if we could get 200 more dollars we could just run a second and next thing you know that they're, they're like well i'll give you 200 and then oh well, he gave 200 well we got we definitely got to give 200 why don't let's see if we can give them 500 you know they're they're just sitting there it's like being at an auction or something i'm just sitting back <laughs> like that's it. Oh yeah. Keep going guys. Who also wants to get in on this? So the students are the ones that benefit, you know, it doesn't benefit me, but it's just, you know, having those conversations and, and knowing what to ask for can sometimes get those kinds of things started. Uh, but you gotta have a, you gotta have a core group of people. You gotta have some variety. You don't just want to have, 
you know, two two technicians or two owners of two independent shops. You need to have dealer principals and and you need to have shop foremans. You need to have parts parts suppliers. You need to have tool vendors. You know, you really want to have a really broad group so you get to see it from all the angles. Um, and that's one of the places where I think everybody can do better. I mean, I, everybody thinks I have a fantastic pack, and I do. But if you saw the list of emails that I sent out to people, you know, thank God half of them ignore, are ignored or, or declined because I'd have to have a, an amphitheater if everybody <laughs> RSVP'd to my pack meetings that I actually send the information out to. If they all show up one day, I'm doomed because we're going to be in trouble. Uh, it, that'll be a, that'll be chaotic. So, um, how we, we do get really good support, man. It's, 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 it's gotten better. And like I said, it's just, I'm, I want to keep, keep the, the ball rolling on that. I don't want it to stop or, or turn around and go backwards or anything. How, how did you advertise the scholarships to your students that we have a scholarship that I set up here in my hometown that uh is for somebody going into the skilled trades a scholarship and it's we do a car show and that's what the uh, the um proceeds go to and last year we didn't have anybody apply so we just donated it mm. to the tech ed program and it's very heartbreaking when that happens you know because you, you you're trying to to help a student out and they had a lot of kids in that class going into the skilled trades and for whatever reason none of them applied well so we we we've seen those struggles in the past. It's not always been you know rainbows and and sunshine. Um, we've we've tried to make it a little bit easier here at the school by simplifying the application process and and just instead of having to apply for individual ones, the students the students you know throughout the school because our our foundation supports other like all the programs here with the money that we earn from, from working on the cars. Um, the students apply. Uh, so we advertise it for about a month in from like February into March and they have an opportunity to apply. They need a teacher letter of recommendation from me or, or another teacher. Um, and, and then we, there's a commit, there's an achievement committee in the, within our school that sits down and, and says, okay, well, you know, here, here are the, the identifiers for these scholarships, these are these ones are earmarked for automotive students. Do we have any automotive applications? Okay, let's look at grades and achievements and and let's figure out who who deserves who's earned these or who deserves them. Um, and and that's kind of what worked best last year for that. Um, that that achievement committee. The aver the advertisement thing is, you know, the you know, I, I obviously advertise them, but we, you know, announcements, uh, I do, I have a bulletin board um, on my website that I put anytime I see a scholarship or a tool giveaway or, or a wrenchway giveaway, it's going on my, my bulletin board. So if the kids are following or they can click on that anywhere, even if they've already graduated, they can go back and look at that or, or see it. It's, it's right there next to my job board, my career board. Um, so I like to keep that stuff posted on there, but it's just, I think falls back to what we said earlier about just creating the excitement and the conversation and talking about it. And, you know, if, if one student's filling it out or talking about it, then the chances are there's going to be a couple other students talking about it or filling it out. Social media can be a big tool. I'm trying to learn that on the fly because, you know, I think I know it, but I know it you know, as someone born in the 80s, not someone born in the 2000s. So it's not the same social media. It's that's a very broad top or broad explanation of it. And I'm not I'm not in the same chapter as they are. So I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what appeals to them uh, with that kind of stuff. Um, because it's such a powerful tool and it, you know, and it doesn't cost it doesn't cost you any money to use that tool unless you want it to. So um it's 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 disheartening when when you know you put in that kind of work to something like that and 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 you don't have any anybody sign you know do that we typically roll the we typically will roll the funds over f to the next year um and then try to give away to the next year um luckily we haven't really had, to, had too many issues with that we did have one year a couple years ago where 
where we awarded the scholarships. And so we had applications and scholarships awarded, but the students didn't claim them. They never submitted the paperwork to claim them. So they, they kind of rolled back over into the fund and, you know, maybe they didn't need, maybe they didn't, you know, maybe their, their, their college was covered through FAFSA or, or grants or whatever. It's hard to say. Yeah, I hope it's not just a, we, I didn't fill out the right paperwork thing, uh, but it's possible. It's just, um, you know, you can, you can do a lot of things for a lot of students, but sometimes they just don't always bite on, on what they need to. So. Want to win cash while helping the industry? Check out our game on Wrenchway Shop Talk called The Loneliest Number. Each week we post quick poll questions about industry topics. Technicians who answer the questions will earn points to play The Loneliest Number game for a chance to win our $1,000 monthly prize. $500 will go to the lucky winner and the other $500 will go to a local high school program of the winner's choice. Start playing now at wrenchway.com slash shop talk. Link is in the show notes. The car show idea is definitely very, very cool. I know there's a lot of really cool schools doing it. Um, I met some guys at the AC conference, you know, that are up in PA and around the area that do have such good luck with that kind of stuff. And, and I give them all the props in the world because I don't even know how I would plan or, or find time to, to figure that part out. Um, I'm hoping they're getting help doing that kind of stuff um, because it is, it is something that I think builds interest in programs like ours. And I think when people ask me why, why, why these programs lose enrollment, that home interaction where your dad or your grandfather takes you out to a car show or to a racetrack – and lets you see this stuff. I think this generation doesn't really have that. And, and it, we still, we're lucky here. We still get a good chunk of students that, that you can tell that that was part of their, their growing up. Um, but there's got to be areas in the country where it's, you know, there's almost zero of that kind of interaction with automobiles or, or the trades or things like that. Um, and it's, it, it's only hurting you know, those students, because they don't even know that that's something they're into, or that's an option for them or whatever. Um, the, they, they need to get out they need to be able to go to these events or see these cars, go to a car show, go to a racetrack, go to an event, go to a build, a builder show or a boat show or whatever with their parents. I'm really nervous. Once the COVID generation gets old enough to be in the programs, it's going to be, I think there's going to be a little bit of a dip. I'm hoping we can just power through um, where, you know, kids were kind of just got kind of used to being at home and, and not getting out and about. So we're, we saw it on the education side with grades and, and math skills and English skills and stuff that we're, we're kind of in the middle of, but I'm just worried about the, just the general, you know, interest and, and ability of the student to know what, what they like and what they don't like and what they're interested in down the road here for the next, you know, five or six years. I've I, I think what you were talking about with getting young people involved in the industry is is huge. Obviously, it's big for your programs because the more students you have in it, the, you know, the stronger it is. Right. And I think getting them interested at a young, young age, it can be a challenge because maybe, like you said, they weren't exposed to it like a like we were by our parents. Right. And so I think, you know, maybe creating some opportunities. I know um, in uh, MATC, Madison Area Technical College, it goes by Madison College now in our backyard here in Wisconsin, uh, they just did a, uh, I believe it's called Nitro X uh, competition where they're doing the, using RC cars and setting up obstacle courses and then allowing students, uh, and they might be eighth graders or sixth graders or something like that, but they're coming in. So they paint the RC cars, they go through like the whole process. So they spend time with collision, they spend time uh, with automotive, uh, just different, uh, different areas of opportunity to get in front of these kids. And it's really popular. Like they, they've done a good job. And I think there's opportunities like that. There's opportunities like iRacing, right? Where it's not very expensive to, to hop on a computer and, and be able to race a car and get exposure to, you know, maybe that adrenaline rush. You'd like to see them, uh, extend that into a, a regular car, but, there are opportunities to just kind of share how cool it is to do this stuff. It just maybe in a, a different sense to a younger person. Yeah, I think, I think 
we're, you know, one of the places where we need help is the middle school level. You know, we, when we get those kids that don't really have that, that pathway or that interest or anything, you know, we, we do a bad job figuring out what they're good at or what they're interested in in middle school. And then, and if we do find out what it is, we don't do a very good job of giving them options that fit that. And I'm, I'm, our state is working on something this year that, you know, I'm hoping that they do it the right way because it's, it's kind of like a more of kind of like a personalized path for students that are into trades or, or career specific career stuff at the middle school level that hopefully, hopefully will direct, you know, kind of funnel students on the right paths so they don't figure out, they don't make it through high school before they figure out that they got to, they got to pick a, pick a career path and, and then end up going to community college kind of with no real idea. And then they got to spend money at college figuring it out. Um, so I'm hoping it works here, but that's a really good place for, you know, programs to get support, whether it be, you know, an RC club or a car, or car club. We have a car club that works with us, Golden Gears, that they'll they'll help us with a student that if we get a student in that's disadvantaged and needs some some money for some uniform stuff or some or for a tool or something, you know, we can go to that car club and they've bailed they've bailed us out every time with you know wow. sending them, writing us a check and stuff. And that's just the kind of stuff that you again you you got to kind of know what to ask for. If you don't really know what to ask for, you you struggle with that, but. You know, like you said, that nitro club, or or putting together some kind of uh, you know some kind of a, a middle school visit, or some kind of an invite out to those places to get that that next generation, you know, figuring out what they are interested in or what they're good at. So when they when they decide to do that, then they're 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 successful in it. Um, it's it's some place where uh, everybody needs to improve. Nobody has. Nobody has the golden ticket on on figuring out what works best for that. Um, I will tell you, I did one of my best students in the last three years who works for Subaru now developed his interest for my program by taking his brother's RC car he got for Christmas that he didn't want and and messing around with it. And then he wanted to know if real cars were built the same way. So he started looking into our class. He signed up for our program, and now he's. Uh, you know, full-time Subaru tech working his way up through uh, Subaru training, uh, going to go to CCBC and get a degree in automotive, uh, uh, applied sciences associate's degree in automotive. So we, you know, that kind of stuff works. Does it? Is it a blanket solution that's going to work for everybody? No, but when you have multiple different options, whether it's a racetrack or a car show or or a content, a building, you know, building, a, you know, an RC car or some kind of a, you know, soapbox derby car or whatever, you're, you're, you know, you're going to, you're going to get one or two students here, one or two students there. And you just got to have your school or your program's brand associated with that kind of stuff. So they know that you're there and that, that, you know, the interest connects with, with that, your program where they could develop it further and maybe even turn it into a career if they wanted to. I just looked it up. It's a uh, Nitro X and it's put on by the Wisconsin Auto and Truck Dealer Foundation. Uh, and WADA does a lot of really great stuff here in Wisconsin, but that is a, that's a really cool program that they've grown the past couple of years. And uh, if you get a chance uh, to the listeners out there, definitely check out what they're doing because I, I think uh, they're setting a pretty good standard for others to uh, to follow suit. So that part's pretty cool. Another way that I look at getting exposure to young people and, and showing them, you know, is this an industry that I'd like to go into or not, uh, is job shadowing, right? So job shadowing in general, getting in the shop and kind of seeing what it's all about. I, th I feel like there's a lot of opportunity there. I don't know that our industry takes full advantage of that. And that's one, uh, you and I have had conversations about that, but I, I, I'm a big believer in job shadowing. I want to get your thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, Long before I was a teacher, the AES program was super successful, and and AES merged with ASC and turned into the Education Foundation. Um, but they really had this 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 mold or this plan that worked so well for getting students, you know, into that or in an automotive program out into the industry. You know, you had a timeline for a job shadow you know, an application, uh, 
an internship over the summer to complete your tasks and work with a mentor and then come back in and, and finish out your school year and then, and then go full time. Um, and at the job shadow is kind of like this golden ticket test drive for a student to be able to decide, you know, if that's what they want to do, if that's the place they want to work. But what it typically ends up being is just kind of like, you know, it, to, for on my in my experience, it ends up being like the the thing that seals the deal. You know, a student is like you know they we want them to job shadow, so we give them opportunities. Um, we're gonna have we have a career event um, for our level one students with their parents, where they'll get to hear from about ten to twelve businesses, automotive diesel shops, and they get to sit down in front of the the parent the student that just started the program last month and. And a parent, and they'll get to tell them why they want to hire their student, why it's such a good thing that they're in this program. They want to, they, yeah, you know, they want them to job shadow. They want to hire them and get them started. You know, minimal hours. They work around the schedule, so it really starts to open the eyes of the parents um, to the job shadow process and to the employment opportunities. Um, but you know, being able to be being able to get the student out in the shop. A lot of times they get they they see the you know how much fun they can have how much interesting stuff goes on, and it it's almost you know it's all, for me it's almost typically a hundred percent success rate. Typically they're like, oh yeah, I got the job, and I'm like, what? Don't you want to job shadow this other place? You know, first and or before you take that job, they're like, no man, I I loved it out there. Like I can't wait to start. They want me to fill out the paperwork. You know, it's. It's almost always like a, a like I said a deal a done deal when you send a kid on a job shadow, um, but there's definitely some some reserve from some of the less experienced students, and I think it's just kind of like this, you know, no you know no love lost agreement where they can get in there and and hey look you know if you don't like it it's no big deal you're not committed to anything, um, so just making sure that the you have the right employer they, they, that's going to put them with the right person while they're there. And that the student understands that there's no, you know, there's no urgency or there's no intent of anything other than just going there and, and, and seeing what, what takes place on a real day in, in a shop or, or an automotive environment. Because it's so much different than school. Um, you know, it's more fast paced. It's, you're going to see more stuff, right? That your, your teacher's not looking over your shoulder the whole day or the whole class period. So... Um, we do we do a pretty good job with the job shadows. Like I said, I I really I did some soul searching during after COVID because you know when COVID occurred, we shut down for two weeks. Um, and you know at that moment, I thought, okay, we're going to be closed for two weeks. We'll get right back to business, as most of everyone did. Yeah. And in hindsight, I mean, I should have got my guys out there working because shops shut down for maybe a week, maybe two weeks, but then they were busier than ever. And those kids that were in, enrolled in the programs, never they lost so much time um, while we were shut down. If they were working in shops or job, you know went on a job shadow or, or did an apprenticeship, they would have supplemented their missed class time with real-world experience. And I just wish I would have been a forward enough thinker to, to kind of crystal ball through that one instead of buying into the, the what everyone was telling us that we'd be, you know, we'd be, we'd be right back at this you know, business as usual. So now, now knowing what I know, then I really try to put a lot of emphasis on getting guys into the, into summer apprenticeships, get them, get them into shops as soon as they're ready, get them job shadowing because it just, it, it's so much more time. Um, it's so much more experience. And then the students just, they, they understand things way better at school when they, when they're working in a shop, they can pick up bad bad habits and bad tendencies, but you can also correct them while you're still, while they're still in your class and they're going there and, and starting to see bad habits or pick up bad habits. You can still, you can still correct them as opposed to if they wait till to start working after you graduate, you know, you don't have a chance to, to, to talk, talk to them about why you don't do that that way or why that's not a good idea. So I'm, I'm told ever since 2020, I'm, I'm like, I got, I'm getting these guys to work. We're going to get them, we'll get them job shadowed. I tell them, you know, we've been, we're not even in a month and I've already talked to 
a few of my level one students who maybe are sophomores uh, and juniors, hey, when you guys are, when you're ready to work, when you think you're ready to work, you let me know. We'll get you out to a job shadow. You tell me where you want a job shadow. We'll, we'll mail off, uh, we mail off invitation letters to, to, to businesses. One of the activities we do is, hey, you do a Google search and you find somewhere where you want to work that's close to home or whatever. And you find out, you find the address and then you find out who the manager or shop foreman is. And then we write a professional letter of invitation. We go through the whole process with actually writing an address on an envelope because students don't know how to do that nowadays. So we teach uh, envelope you know, envelope and mailing and professional letters in automotive, uh, cause that's a lost art. And it then is. we send them out to those businesses so they can, so they see that these students are interested in, in coming to work for them and, and, and being part of the industry. So. Yeah. I, I think that's a really, really great take. And I actually think it can be, a, there, there's another benefit to bringing kids in for job shadows and the, finding out which ones have and a true ambition to be successful in this, in this field. But those ones that don't, that could be your future customers as well, right? Like they're, they're going to go out into to the real world and need their car fixed or their truck fixed, or whatever it is. And if they remember their experience as being solid with you, you know, that, that could create a lifetime customer out of it. And maybe you convert their parents uh, because they go back and say, Hey, that was a really cool place. And, my goodness, is uh, is their equipment sophisticated? And, you know, it, it just, I feel like if you make that a really, really good experience for a young person, uh, that that can have a lot of different benefits for you as a shop. Yeah, I mean, everything's so brand-oriented nowadays. You know, it's it's one of the things that I I think some, some companies do really well um, and some businesses do really, really well. And I think it's some places where, Every, you know, a lot of places could grow. Uh, you know, when I talk about partnerships with my employers um, that hire the students, you know, it, hey, this is, you know, get your brand, get your brand, your, your company in front of these students. Show them how well you'll take care of them or how easy your product is to work on and, and get them comfortable with it because they're so brand attached or brand recog you know, Brand recognition is so important to them. Uh, I look at it with the tool companies, the, the the equipment suppliers, the the vehicle manufacturers, all the way down to the employers. You know, hey, you know, if 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 I'm coming in and I'm handing out, uh, you know, this Toyota dealerships T-shirts and hats to students, they're taking them home and wearing them. They're taking them home, giving them to their little brother. They're giving them to their family or whatever. Um, I've gotten some like leftover frisbees and stuff from com some companies that you know I tell the kids if any of them want one they can take one or if they got a dog that likes they like to throw the frisbee for but it's just it's brand rec it's brand awareness brand recognition it can it can be a be a hidden benefit for a shop that you know thinks a job shadow was a was not a success because the kid decided not to go work there they know who you are now. They, they're familiar with you. Now you understand the process. Huge. Like, there's no way that it's not that there's no way that that's a negative turnout. Like everybody wins there. Um, and a lot of times shops get too caught up on, Oh, well this, this kid didn't work out. You know, I'm not going to go back to that school and get, get another student. People leave, people move, people change their minds. Um, things, things change, you know, it, it's it's disheartening when when employers don't want to you know hire another student because they had a bad experience or something before so and so said that they had a bad experience or I heard that this did you know they did that or whatever it's like it's like man if you like this is your future like this these these guys are you know are ten years away from being your your shop foreman like you know if that one didn't work out come get another one like just you know. Don't don't take away an opportunity away from a potential future star because you heard about a bad experience or maybe that kid didn't work out. Maybe he had something going on, whatever. Um, there's so much upside. It's like, you know, any downside is almost irrelevant. That always that always drove me kind of crazy. Uh, still does when they'll say they went to this tech school or they went to this high school and they're not going to hire them because they went there. And 
you know, I, I say this about technicians as a whole, but uh, what, where I think a lot of companies fall short, a lot of shops fall short, is that they don't understand that these are all individuals. Like at the end of the day, they're all different people. And I don't care what school you are. I don't care where you're coming from. People have different work ethics. People have different, uh, you're hiring the individual, not not the school. And I, I can't say that enough because I, I still think there's some perception out there that depending on where they came from is how successful they're going to be. And I don't think that's the case at all. The, the, I promise the car or the truck does not care what the race or gender or political beliefs of the person, you know, taking the wheel on and putting it back, taking the wheel off and putting it back on is, you know, when we, you know, there are definitely stereotypes in our industry, but when students come and shadow here and visit my program and want to sign up, like, I tell them, I'm like, I want the best 16 students in my classroom that I can have. I don't care what they look like, what they smell like. I don't care. Just give me effort. Come in here with an open mind and, 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 and give me effort, and we will find a place for you. We Someone will want you. Um and I fought some of those stereotypes when I first started, but man, some of the some of the absolute best students that come out of this program aren't your typical what you would find in a Google search if you typed up technician or mechanic, and and that's good because we need that diversity in the shops. We got we got four girls in the program this year, and that's a lot for us, but that's not enough. Like it it needs to be more. I got a. a we got a county initiative with the women, with the women in trades group and they're getting ready to do a social media drop of this video that they had. They shot last year at the end of the school year. And Vanessa, who was my graduating senior who works for Volkswagen and is going to Montgomery college with the dealers association around here for, for free, probably, probably for less than free. Is that even possible? <laughs> uh, she, Make she does. Money. She's a, yeah, she's in the video and, and man, she just, she just, crushes the video. I can't wait. I, I, I don't even want to wait to share it because it's so good. She's just, she wants, she literally said, I'm, I, I enjoy this and I want to break down the gender barrier and I want to start my own shop and I want to fill it up with, you know, girls that want to work on cars. Like I don't, it's not important to me. I just, I like doing this. I know other people are going to like doing this, um, whether they're girls or guys. And like, that's, that's where I'm at. That's just, when you when you spend two years teaching somebody and that's the end product, you know that's just like you're just there's so much pride there and you just want to like you just want to start start doing it all over again with the next the next one up. I think there's going to be many generations uh, that you impact and a lot of students that you have already impacted and and many more that are that are coming. So uh, we appreciate everything you do for this industry. We appreciate everything you do. Uh, in support of us as as a company, but just in general, uh, how good of a program you run and and how good of a friend you've been to us. So thank you for everything that you're doing. We really, really appreciate it. We're huge fans of what you're doing out there and uh, look look forward to doing another one of these with you sometime. I would be happy. You know how to get a hold of me. You know, I love to talk, so uh, <laughs> I will make time in my schedule. We had to We had to play tag with this one a little bit, but we got it done and uh, I hope hope everybody that listens enjoys it and you know can make some make some good feed good feedback so we can make it we can make another one and answer some questions and, and help people out well we appreciate it and uh, look forward to the next one take care thanks jay that wraps up this week's episode of beyond the wrench be sure to tune in next week for another brand new episode as a reminder don't forget to rate and follow beyond the wrench on apple Google, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. This helps us get beyond the wrench in front of other fantastic shop owners, managers, technicians, and dealers just like you, so we can continue to help improve, promote, and grow this amazing industry. Thanks everyone for listening, and we'll be back next week. 